Uh, basically, Allie and I lived really close to each other for 25 years, is that right? 25 years-ish. They never knew each other. We lived about five to 10 minutes away from each other. Uh, two small towns, a local friend at, a, at the ER that I was working at was uh, introduced us, thought we'd be perfect together. Allie. <laughs> <laughs> How did that play out? How I got to tell her. Well, she gave me her number. And then I said, before I call her, you better ask her to make sure that's okay. So what then you said? So she asked me and she said, I gave this guy your number. Do you know Ryan Ladd? And I said, no. She said, I gave him your number, but he wanted me to ask before he called. And I said, well, you already gave my number. I can't say no now. And so it started with that and he called and I worked at Sherwin-Williams at the time. And as soon as he called, I had two customers walk in. I said, I know this sounds really generic, but I just had two customers walk in, I'll call you back. And I called him back and neither one of us were looking for a relationship. We just wanted somebody to talk to and maybe go out to eat and go to the movies. And we've been talking ever since. And it never stopped. Yeah, I moved in six months later. <laughs> <laughs> So then we went to Ruby Tuesdays to eat. We met in Crossville at Ruby Tuesdays. I thought she was going to stand me up because there again, once I called and said, hey, I'm here. She said, oh, I've got to be late at work. I don't know when I'm going to be there. And um, But anyway, she ended up showing up. And like she said, it moved really fast. And then moved in. About, I mean, it was literally probably, what, six to eight months later. And then... That was in 2008 and 2011, we got married. Lived our lives just uh, going out, having fun with friends and, and... Ryan went out and had fun with friends. You were there. Mm, I was home a lot. Ryan liked to party. Not too hard though, right? He likes to party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a homebody. I'm more on the go now with two kids, but I'm a homebody. Introvert, extrovert. For sure. And we started to do all the right things. We got married, um, had... That's the right thing? Are you sure it's the right thing? <laughs> that was the start of it. And then... I got pregnant in 2014. We got married in 2011. Got pregnant and I would have been pregnant in 2013. Had Kendi in 2014 and we just thought everything was perfect. Everything was falling together. Right before, I think it was before Kendi was born, we had been church hopping. Uh, we finally found a church to call our home. Uh, we church hopped ready. for a long time. We that's found a good six months, maybe a year. Yeah, we found a couple of places that we liked, but we never, never felt really at home until we found our home church that we're uh, members of now. So Big Emory became home. Um, I was baptized as a young child, and I decided to be baptized as an adult to make my choice. So me and Ryan were both baptized. Um, we thought everything couldn't be more perfect, and then. Well, through all of it, Kendi had never been sick in her life. She was completely perfect. She was a good baby. She was beautiful. My pregnancy was perfect. Um, delivery was terrible, but I think most deliveries are terrible. <laughs> I ended up with a C-section 22 hours later, but um, nonetheless, she was healthy, meeting all her milestones. And then we just noticed a slight... All of her newborn screening tests were, were normal as well. And... Uh... So at about three months, we noticed a slight, I don't even know how to explain it, not even half the size of a golf ball, just a, a slight hump no. in her back. Yeah. Only something that me and Ryan noticed, nobody else noticed. Um, so we asked our pediatrician and he said that it was nothing to worry about. At the six month checkup, we asked the same thing. My mom was with me and he said that her muscles hadn't fully developed, wouldn't worry about it. 
and in nine months it became quite a bit more prominent and so I couldn't wait for her nine month checkup I made an appointment and said I want answers and when we walked in you could tell that he had missed something um, and I don't want to say maybe that he had missed something because Hurler is extremely rare. It's one in a hundred thousand to have Hurler syndrome. So he had, most pediatricians will never see this disease in their office. Um, so that day that he saw us, he sent us straight to East Tennessee Children's Hospital and we did a lot of imaging. And I will never forget, we were extremely excited because they had basically told us they didn't think it was any type of cancer and what it what could be worse than cancer I mean that's the worst thing you think of and so we were excited we celebrated that night we went to eat. Well, hold up let's back up because I think you're moving a little bit too fast there like you know I was at work and um, uh, I was working on a project at work with an auditor so I really shouldn't have left and she called and said you know, um, Kennedy's at a nine month appointment. We're going, um, he thinks that the hump, obviously that we talked about was, um, was a little more prominent and going to send for more imaging. And I said, okay, do I need to come? And of course, Allie being the strong one that she is was like, no, mom's going to go with me. I think we'll be okay. And, and so I continued on with my project at work and then right in the middle of it, probably, I don't know, maybe five or so minutes later, I just kept having this feeling in the back of my back of my throat, my stomach, and just my mind was saying, there is a reason you need to go. Like, you need to get out of here. Just, just go. It doesn't matter what's going on at work. Family's way more important. And just go. And so basically, I dropped everything right there in, in front of the whole group and said, I've got to go. I can't, I can't be here. I've got to go. And so I left work and met them at the hospital. And uh, Kennedy had, she had an MRI that night. She had an ultrasound, had an x-ray. I was just trying to think what I'm thinking. She had a CAT scan, an x-ray, and an ultrasound. I think the CAT scan is what they put her under for. It was either an MRI or a CAT scan, let's say that. But she still had to be. We were know, there all day. Yeah. And she, had multiple pick or pricks and. Yeah, she had to be stuck multiple times to try and get an IV on her so that they could um, give her the medication to let her go to sleep so that she would remain calm and still through the procedure. And um, I mean, what, four, probably four or five times. And then they finally got it in her foot. Um, so nevertheless, to continue on with the story, we got the news that, you know, they said it was a gibbous. And... Um, Allie and I not knowing what a gibbous was, but the main word, the main word I believe that we were looking for at the time was was cancer. We were that's that's our that wasn't that what you would think that you know a possible tumor or anything of that nature. That's what we thought that it possibly could be. And and since we didn't hear that word or we didn't hear any of the aspect of that word tumor or cancer, we was like, yeah, this is a give us okay we can rock on with this we're, it's, it's good news and so there again we went to um what smoky mountain brewery there in knoxville and i remember saying gosh i just need a, i need a beer i need to, to to relax from this this has been a very very stressful day because this started at what probably i think her appointment was at nine yeah like nine early that morning. morning and then we probably got left the hospital and got to the restaurant probably what about 8 30 ish and uh, i never will forget uh, we went to target Allie's most favorite store and uh and i remember my brother calling and we were in target and he was checking on kennedy and us and seeing how we were and and answered the phone and he said well how is everybody and i said well we're at target and he said well i guess since you're at target everything's pretty good and I said, well, we, we still got to get some more information, but I believe everything's going to be good and uh, we'll just carry on from here. And, and uh, I kid you not, we probably five, ten minutes later walking out of Target, um, our pediatrician called and said, you know, don't, it's, it's a give us, um, don't Google it. Don't go home and Google it. I'll get some more information together and I'll... I'll call you tomorrow and I just remember asking him I said is, is our baby okay is our is our baby gonna be all right and he couldn't give me a for sure answer he was just like just 
we'll get some more information together. Just don't go home and Google it. That's all I'm telling you is don't go Google it. And we didn't, did we? I mean, we, we didn't come home and Google. We I never Googled. I think I'm telling the truth here that I never Googled until we got the final diagnosis. So with that being said, um, uh, you know this, the whole... I don't. So you'll tell better. through series, a lot of my brain, it just seems that I think it's just a trauma thing that you go through. It's so traumatic that a lot of it you forget and timelines don't add up and things don't make sense. And somehow you just get through it. And um, you also learn that I've been through it twice. So I don't remember a lot of things. Um, it's just easier to forget things than to remember them. So I'm gonna go Toby up. I'll be back. But what I remember is, so let me back up a little bit. For many, many years, 24 plus years, my mom worked at a lumber company. So now here we are, and she works for some pediatric doctors, and he became now we know almost an angel he directed us he guided us when everybody just sort of left us we felt like just in a waiting game our pediatrician had said you know we'll make the appointment we'll get you in a genetic appointment i had his name is dr chris is what i'll call him and dr chris called and said you need to call and make the appointment he told me who i needed to call I called, um, they didn't have an appointment, maybe the geneticist was out of town, but they would see us at a Kentucky location and I had called Cincinnati Children's Hospital for a genetic appointment because at that time, the genetic doctor in Knoxville was only taking newborns and Kennedy was nine months old. So we went to the genetic appointment, um, Ryan and my mom and I went with Kennedy and they ask us lots of questions, probably an hour worth of questions. And at this point, me and Ryan are still clueless. We'd never heard the word MPS. Um, they had said at the end of the discussion, if you would have came in without your husband, we would say yes. We think she has MPS. MPS has some coarse facial features. Um, and Kennedy had those, but then seeing Ryan, she looked a lot like her dad too, so they really weren't sure. So before we left the office that day, we did, was it an EKG, an echo? We did an, an echo, echo and an EKG, EKG and, and they came back, didn't show anything, didn't detect anything. So even more they're like, you know, maybe, maybe she doesn't. Um, and so they had, in that appointment, brought up the word MPS. And we said, what is MPS? And now it's very easy for us to say, MPS is mucopolysaccharidosis. And um, we talked about a lot of things. Um, they gave us a little bit of a description and we asked what her quality of life would be. And he looked us dead in the eye and said it would not be good. And you have to remember, Kendi had never been sick a day in her life. She'd never had an ear infection. She never had a cold. Um, but she, that was when Ryan and I looked at each other and said, no matter what happens, this is when we gave it all to God, no matter what happens, we've had the best nine months of our lives. And we cried a lot and they gave us a packet. It was about MPS and we decided we would not open it until we got the diagnosis. A week later, they had done a urine test and it came back saying her gags were elevated and that's the trash, the buildup in her body. So we knew she had a type of MPS, but we didn't know what kind. There's over, I think, not over, I think there's 13 types of MPS. Exactly two weeks from the genetics appointment and when they drew her blood, and that was the first time I can remember a God moment because I was with one of my best friends at work having coffee that morning. Um, I called Ryan, a lot of tears, but I decided to stay at work that day. Um, that's just sort of how I handle things is to just put it all inside. I don't show a lot of emotion. And that was my, I think, my defense mechanism. And also in my brain, I think there wasn't anything I could do at home. It wasn't going to change anything. It wasn't going to change the diagnosis. Um, my life was about to turn upside down. So I would just 
do what I knew was normal as long as I could. Um, things happened really quickly. People really rallied around us. I don't know what night we posted on Facebook. I think it was like that night, if I'm not mistaken. After we told family, we was like, we got to just... Because that was the first time family had heard anything about MPS. Our family had never heard the word mucopolysaccharidosis. Um, I am a very private person. And not only am I a private person, it's not that I was a private person, it was that we didn't want people to worry if there was no need to worry. So we had not told any family where we had been, what was going on, that Kendi might have MPS. And so when we got the actual diagnosis, that's the day we told family. So we decided to start a Facebook page as well to uh, let people follow our journey. We knew that there was gonna be some close family, close friends that would want to um, know about everything and get updates and knowing just have speaking with the doctors and talking with them on what uh, might lie ahead for us in our in our journey was um, we were going to be busy and going to be busy taking care of Kennedy and that's where our our time and focus need to be so we decided to start a Facebook page and and we knew f after talking to Cincinnati and our case manager that I was going to be out of work for three to four months. That we were going, Kennedy was going to be living in the hospital in isolation for three to four months. So we created the Facebook page, thinking, you know, friends, family, and we woke up the next morning. And I think we had over a thousand. It was a within, thousand within minutes. There was hundreds of likes on the page, and then. I think by the next day, by the next morning, and this was probably 10-ish o'clock at night when we created this page. So the next morning we woke up and um, there was, we were just getting notifications left and right that uh, how many likes were on the page. And um, I think there was over a thousand by early the next morning and it just continued to climb. And then our community continued to rally. So- um, There's little it, things like that, I feel like, Maybe we did see at the time, but you really look now and you're like, I mean, it was a God thing because we felt, or I felt so alone and so scared and really had no clue what we were going to do. And, and we, I mean, I think we cried to see a thousand likes. I mean, it sounds crazy, but just to know that people cared, that people were going to be there, really... And it's a very true statement. Um, there's some little small stuff that we've left out through this story about uh, I've never been to a men's Bible study in my life. I went to church on Sundays and um, was a Christian, had been baptized at a very early age. And um, me and my dad and my brother started going to uh, going to men's Bible study, uh, which has basically never been really heard of. And, in our family, unfortunately to say, we went to church on Sundays, we knew who God was and we were Christians, um, but never dove into the word. And and so uh, with Allie and I finding our home church, which is the same as, as the, some of our other family and um, just uh, getting closer to God, it's a true statement that the devil's gonna, you know, try and squeeze his way in there closer and that you that you get to God. He's gonna try to, to force his way in there Worse, I mean, whatever the word I'm looking for there, but worse, sir. Worse, sir. East Tennessee, babe. Um, but you know, just uh, uh, the closer that I guess in short term, short form, the closer that we got to God and the closer we grew in our marriage and put God first in our marriage is whenever a lot of the challenges started happening. Allie and I were, um, we, we, we rededicated our lives and uh, got baptized and and then and joined the church and joined the church as well and um, just was trying to live our our life right and at this time Kennedy had been born um, and this was before our journey with with Hurler syndrome started 
And uh, so uh, I want to put that in there and, and let you know that, that that's what um, I believe Ali stated earlier, that that's even though you're going through some stuff and you don't know what you're going through or the reason things are happening, but all this was, you know, just pu pieces of the puzzle that was being put together by God to to build us up stronger in our marriage and our relationship with God and, and to... Uh, to build us up stronger for for what was to come, the uh, the storm was brewing out in sea, and God was preparing us on land, and knew that that storm was coming. We couldn't see it, but He did, and uh, He knew it was coming. and And so, we uh, local friends and family just like rallied, to, you know, with us and and continue like the page, and and then I get a phone call uh, from a good buddy of mine, Jerry, at the Oak Ridge Country Club that they were gonna put a tournament on for us and was hoping to raise, you know, somewhere around the, the fact of nine to $10,000 to um, all the employees were coming in for free that day to not get paid. And, and could we help spread the word? And this was gonna help us with travel expenses, medical expenses, food, all the above, basically everything that comes with this type of diagnosis, this type of hospital stay and, and, um, so we, we spread the word the best we could. We put it on the Facebook page. We gave out flyers. We told people. We called friends, family. And uh, then <laughs> we got um, another call from our another friend at work, and they wanted to put out a flyer. Isn't that right? Didn't we? Or did we create the flyer? No, Jerry created the flyer. I think Jerry created the flyer, and I worked at, um, I worked at a large facility. And so we have like an in-house newsletter. And so I wanted the, I asked them to publish the newsletter. And they came back and said that it couldn't be published, not they, she came back and said that it couldn't be published because it had a cross on it. Um, I don't like confrontation. I like smooth. So I called Ryan and told him and I guess, honestly probably thought we'd take the cross off. It had a Bible verse on it as well. And publish it and Ryan said no. Either you tell them they publish it like it is or they don't publish it, and they didn't publish it. So, um, on a Monday, things like that again, the devil just trying to steal our joy, so they didn't publish it. Um, the same thing, the next thing that happened was Chick fil A, the local Chick fil A had a Chick fil A day for us. It was going to be on May 4th because I remember May the 4th be with you, <laughs> and then now we know that that's Lincoln's birthday. But Chick-fil-A was going to have a Chick-fil-A day for us. And then one of my good friends who I went to high school with, he worked at the same place that I did. And um, he sent the Chick-fil-A newsletter out to his group. And he got, Almost got summoned. Fired. I would say he got summoned. And the same lady that did not want to publish my hour um, golf tournament flyer with the cross on it, said that he was using his work email for personal matters and yes he got reprimanded and um again try to steal our joy um you know still every hope that we might have and it was very hard for me it was very sad made me want to fight um but just gotta let god work yeah and he did he moved they, like Ryan said, I think Ryan said they were, thought they were going to raise nine or ten thousand dollars for us, and they wrote us a check. You can find it on our Facebook. Um, they raised thirty-five thousand dollars at the golf tournament, and then not only that, Chick Fil A said that was the biggest Fun Chick Fil A raising. fundraiser that they had had. Where at that store? I don't at, know about. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, at that particular store and. Um, so that's just God showing up and showing out saying, you know, I don't, uh, I don't need certain things to prove that I'm here and working and, and that's what he did. So, yeah. uh, just opened our eyes to show not only our community was behind us, but there again, that, that God was behind us and, and pushing us in the right direction and, and going to be right by our side and, and leading us through the, the whole thing. So, uh, um, there's a lot more, but I believe that we've kept y'all long enough on this one and... 
please come back. We're going to try to do this every week. We are not the most uh, scheduled type family. We try to shoot from the hip, which is, <laughs> has got us through a lot. Um, and you will see that in the episodes coming up. But we're going to try to post these at least once a week. Um, get them out. Um, I would love to say a day. but Which is one reason we started the YouTube channel and the videoing is because if you go back and look... So we didn't say that their Facebook page that started out as Kennedy's Facebook page is Kennedy and Lincoln Lads Prayer Group on Facebook. Um, we want you to follow our channel here and subscribe is where you're going to be up to date and you're going to get to see our crazy kids. But that's where it all started was the Facebook page. And I did really good with Kennedy, updated a lot with Kennedy. And then with Lincoln, it's just a really... What everybody says, the second child. Um, he didn't get as many updates as Kennedy. I made book out of Kennedy's. Um, but it just got really hard to post. It takes me a good two hours to get my thoughts processed, to type out my post. And once I had Lincoln, I just didn't have the time I had when it was just Kennedy. Are you giving them teasers for future episodes? So those episodes? got shorter. <laughs> and then those turned into Facebook Lives. And now they've turned into few and far between. So here we are. We really want you to su subscribe below. And we really want you to hit the... Is it a bell? I think it's a bell. We want you to hit the... We think it's a bell. So that you get notifications when we upload new videos. Because um, we know your time. You don't have a lot of time either. So it's easier just to watch them as they come. Than to let your... Our, binge watch them. Yeah. Binge watch them. <laughs> so save them if you want to. But... We think do a notification. So we're going to say see you next week. We <laughs> hope to see you next week. And we want to thank you all for everything. And uh, God bless every one of you. Yes. Thank you.